Hi, it's Eric here from Psych Sessions Podcast World Headquarters. Garth and I wanted to share a new, fun, and hopefully informative feature, a podference. On Wednesday, January 1st, Psych Sessions will host its first podference extravaganza, a great way to start the new year with free professional development suitable for binge listening. If you have a long flight to Nighttop or just want to be inspired for the new semester or quarter or term, we have four keynote addresses delivered to you, plus a bonus conversation about meaningful assessment. Just go to bit.ly slash podference. Now that's B-I-T dot L-Y slash P-O-D dash F-E-R-E-N-C-E. So it's bit.ly slash podference, but there's a dot, a slash, and a dash. So it's B-I-T dot L-Y slash P-O-D dash F-E-R-E-N-C-E for the details. Keep listening to Psych Sessions throughout 2020 for more innovative programming. Can you hear us now? Hello and welcome to Psych Sessions, conversations about teaching and stuff. I'm Eric Landrum along with Garth Neufeld, your podcast hosts. As the name implies, we center on conversations about teaching, but we often veer into other interesting topics, which is the end stuff. This is episode number 76, where Garth had the opportunity to interview the current leaders of TOPS, Teachers of Psychology in Secondary Schools. Allison Shaver, TOPS Chair from Plymouth South High School in Plymouth, Massachusetts, and Jennifer Slish, TOPS Chair-Elect from Olaf South High School in Olaf, Kansas. Now, before you hear the interview, please allow me to share some listening tips and my favorite moments. This was a delightful interview, and I really enjoyed listening to the three of them talk about, uh, a lot of it was about TOPS and the organization, but really it was about the challenges that high school teachers face And I I forget about in my day-to-day college student teaching role, and I I forget about the perks and the privileges that I have. And so it uh, it was twofold. It really made me appreciate what I have, and it really made me appreciate uh, the challenges and the successes that high school teachers uh, celebrate every day in their classrooms across the U.S. So let me just share a couple of my favorite moments. Um, College teachers probably, at least it's my perception, that we have a little bit more professional development opportunities. We get to go to regional and national conferences more often. And I think uh, Allison and Jen were really uh, very specifically appreciative about their chances to be uh, become active on the national scene. And I think they both acknowledged that much of that came through the their first interactions at the AP Psychology Reading. And so they are both very proactive about encouraging other psychology teachers uh, to pursue those same networking opportunities. Um, in fact, they do their own regional networks as well. I know that um, uh, Jen talked about um, what she does in the Kansas City area, trying to gather teachers together from time to time. Uh, I was struck by the conversations about uh, buildings and that when they when they go for their own professional development, you know, they're oftentimes the only psychology teacher in the building. And it reminded me of conversations that we had with um that Gartha, I believe, had with Charlie Blair Broker on an earlier podcast episode in his high school teaching days, when at the high school teacher level, your networking is not with, you know, a 13-member Department of Psycho- Psychological Science like mine is at Boise State, but it's with when you leave your building. It might be in your district or it might be at a statewide or a, a TOPS meeting nationally. And so I think we forget about that sometimes if we're not in that high school setting. You know, I don't think about that our high school teachers of psychology who are teaching the entire introductory psychology course, either a regular course or an AP psych course or an IB course, um, probably don't have access to um, like the entire journal collection that you would have through a psych info uh, I think both Allison and Jen talked about, you know, 
TOP, as members of STP, they have access to teaching of psychology, but they wouldn't have access to a complete set of journal articles. And so uh, getting access to those primary source materials, if you're teaching a college-level intro psych course in high school, it would be particularly challenging. And so I, I think those of us in the STP world might want to think about how we might broker a solution for our teaching of psychology colleagues at the high school level. I just really appreciate the effort and the passion that I heard in these teachers of psychology talking about things that um, I know very little about, the professional learning communities that they that they share at the high school level, um, their passion for talking about credentialing and how that's really interesting because it dovetails nicely with some of the things going on in 2019 with the introductory psychology initiative and how important teacher training is. And so uh, I think there are a lot of common pathways happening uh, at different levels of uh, psychology education, whether or not um, whether or not those folks are cross-talking with one another is a, is a different issue, but I think there's some commonalities going on there. I just really appreciated the passion that I heard from them about the curriculum, about training, about the importance of the course to their students. Um, I appreciated once again hearing about how um, they are concerned that teachers who are trained to teach history are placed in a situation where they're teaching psychology. And while some teachers in the high school level are pleased with that choice and they they jump into it and they fully immerse themselves in the psychology literature. Others may not be as interested in that and may be doing the psychology uh, education piece a disservice. And so I was just completely impressed and enthralled with this conversation. And I hope that you will enjoy it as always as much as I did. Hey everyone, it's Garth and I am at APA 2019, the convention in Chicago, and I am with Allison Shaver from Plymouth, Plymouth? Yeah. South High School, and Jen, Sh help me. Slish. Slish, and I cannot remember your last name, or where you're from. Olathe South High School. Olathe South High School. Yes. See, it, now the people don't know this, but it's not on your name tag where you're from. I mean, what high school you teach at. So, uh, as you know from the podcast, we don't take a lot of notes, and uh, I didn't do my homework, except that I know you guys from working on things together and yeah. seeing you all around. So, let me just uh, tell everybody that you are president and president elect of TOPS right now. Chair, we call chair. it chair. chair. Chair and chair elect. So, I, this is Allison. Do yeah. we need to clarify that? Well, I think so. I Well, probably not every time, but yeah. Right. But by the way, thank you for doing this together. I know we've been trying to do this for a while. We tried at the reading and then uh, and then here. And we are in a room where we're probably going to get interrupted. Um, and and I asked you to do it together, and I sure appreciate that. So, Allison, tell yeah. us about what you're doing. So we are here. Um, we are allotted as the TOPS committee three um, slots to program. And so Maria Vida, who has already done a podcast with you and is amazing, um, she uh, was in charge of filling our slots this year. Um, and so we are here to support her. And also, the, it's my job next year. And I'd never been to a convention before, so I thought I should probably attend a convention before I'm in charge of our programming for convention, and I need to figure out what that's all about. Right. So your position is uh, is incoming chair? I'm chair current elect? chair. Your current chair? Yes. Okay. So our past chair is does the, the programming. does the programming, yeah. Well, right, because it would be a lot, right, to do it at the same sure. time while you're running tops? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, and then, so then you are elect, is that right? Yes. Okay. I'm chair elect. Yeah. So in January, I become the chair and Allison becomes the past chair, and then Maria rotates off. And we'll have a new chair elect. And yeah, I came to attend the pre-conference workshop that TOPS puts on and help Maria and figure out how we're supposed to navigate all of these things yeah. for when it's our turn or her turn next year and then mine the year after. Right. It's nice and, that you guys get to see it for a couple of years. Yeah. Uh, now you do a full one day workshop, yeah, right? Yes. Ahead of time? For high school teachers. Um, yeah. It was held at Columbia College this year, um, 
and we had 40 people register, which was great. I mean, it's a Chicago area pulls in a lot of psychology teachers. This year, the NCSS um, conference, which is the National Council of Social Studies Teachers Conference, was in Chicago and was very highly attended because there's a lot of psychology teachers in the Chicago area. So we knew that, that, that it was going to be a big pull, and, and having 40 high school teachers there, um, we had two master teachers presenting, so Melissa Schaefer Adams and Stephen Turner both came in and presented to us. We also had um, a college professor, Dr. Eli Finkel, come in and talk to us about his all or nothing marriage, which is really interesting. Whoa, wait, what's an all or nothing marriage? Um, is it hard it, to explain it was, quickly? It was yeah. mostly about how, kind of the history of marriage and how we've kind of culturally made it so that your spouse, your partner, is expected to provide everything that you need in the relationship and that that's a lot of pressure to put on one relationship and that kind of diversifying your like needs. So if you have your one friend that you go to when something's really hilarious or you have other people that you spend time with, takes a little bit of pressure off of that one relationship. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. Uh, she, he? he, he, has he done research on this and yes. Oh, yeah. has he, yeah. he's, he's written, written about the, it? The, the yeah. book is called the all or nothing, nothing marriage. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And it was kind of cool. It was cool to see because I, and I never thought about this because like, why would I think about this? But marriages in the 1800s to early 1900s were more about survival and you needed a spouse to help you with the work. And you needed children to help with the work. And then as we became more industrialized in the 1950s or so, it became a little bit more like, oh, let's go on dates. Let me find someone I love. And then as we've progressed as a society, there have been different reasons for people to get married. And But now, do we really need to be married? Was kind of what he says. Like, is monogamy, you know, this thing that you have to have. It's just oh, really interesting. That's fascinating. Yeah. 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 That's an interesting topic for a bunch of high school teachers for a one-day workshop. Wouldn't yeah. you agree? Yeah. So he spoke for about 45 minutes to an hour yeah. toward the end. And, and I think that one of the things that we don't often get as high school teachers is the current research going on in psychology, right? We both teach AP Psych. Um, and so there's that 14 chapter, well now nine unit curriculum that we have to get through by the date of the test. That doesn't change. Jen starts school next week. I don't start school for two weeks. So I have two less weeks than she does to teach right. the curriculum. And, you know, we don't get a lot of time to hear about the current things happening. So it was really neat to, yeah. to experience like, oh, this might not be, you know, directly applicable to my classroom, but this is what psychology is doing outside of the Myers textbook. Well, and it's, it's inter well, obviously that is a super interesting topic, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. that can uh, be a, a topic like that can be a launching point for a lot of psychology, right? So sure. a teacher who hears that, who says, I was at this talk this summer with this researcher who said these things, what are we learning about which might, uh, which, which might explain some of the things that, that he's saying? Yeah. Um, but yeah, content experts, we don't all, I, I mean, I don't see that many content experts even in the community college system. I think four-year folks have probably more access to those sure. people doing that research on whatever that topic is in psychology. But I like that you guys did that. Who, who yeah. found this person? Maria. Oh, she did? did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, that, so that is also part of the role of the past chair is to organize the pre-conference okay. day as well. And so what does that look like, a pre-conference day? Like, I know you guys, uh, you guys do the Clark workshop. Mm -hmm. There was an OSU one just yes. recently. What are we calling that one? Um, oh, good. I've stumped really, you. It has a name. It's like the psychological... Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Teaching of psychological science at Oregon State University. Something. You know what? Eric will put it in the liner notes. Yeah, it's fine. I'm yeah. Sorry. No, 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 it's fine. So, are these, would you say they're pretty similar? Then there's the summer institutes as well, right? Where are, are those different? Those are college oh, those board. Those are college board. So, okay, yeah, so, so let's table board, that. Yeah. Um, 
But one thing that we do have, and it's not necessarily linked to TOPS, but TOPS has a lot of resources for, are the regional networks. So a lot of, a lot of regional networks around the country have cropped up with high school teachers wanting you know, that, that time together. Mm -hmm. um, and Jen runs one, if you want to talk a little bit about like, what that looks like. or Yeah. Yeah, I have a little regional network in Kansas City, and it's basically me, and uh, I invite other teachers of psychology in Kansas City, which in Kansas City is kind of different. Like Chicago, I came up to Shy Tops one year just to see how it runs, and there's 150 psychology teachers there. I don't think 150 people teach psychology in the entire state of Kansas. Um, so, you know, maybe 10 of us get together. We have some breakfast, we share some lessons. I might have some kind of college faculty person come in and talk for a little bit, and then we eat lunch, and then that's about it. Um, you know, uh, it's interesting. I, I started Tip Northwest about five years ago, and now we are getting, I mean, as a conference organizer, you want it to be bigger, mm -hmm. but you lose something. Yeah. I mean, we're not sitting, we actually try to replicate exactly what you're saying, in our big sessions to break out into these small, uh, these, these small groups where you can talk about that stuff, but it's not nearly as organic as what you're talking about. And I bet you it's pretty a great, it's a great day when you guys yeah, get together. It, it, it really is. Um, it's just kind of hard when, I mean, we're in K the Kansas City area, everyone drives everywhere, everyone's busy. It's hard to find a time when it's convenient for people. So I did one in the fall and then too many people had kid stuff going on. So I did one in the spring and then too many people had kid things going on. And so you don't want to do it in the winter because who knows what the weather's like in Kansas in the winter. It could be 85 degrees or it could be an ice storm. So um, it's just kind of hard to find the balance. I think this year I'm going to try to work with my district coordinator to do it on a Friday so that people could have professional development hours for it um, and a lot of people just don't want to give up their Saturday I hear that uh, we just got what we call clock hours in Washington State uh, professional hours uh, or continuing ed for mm -hmm. high school teachers specifically because we needed to incentivize them it's hard to get them out you know I think high school teachers have have such a difficult job compared to what like what I do I have so much freedom um, and so you know I you don't always get to choose what you're going to teach from my understanding right you guys teach all like across disciplines um, you uh, I, ha I know some teachers high school teachers if they take a Friday off they have to pay for a sub in order to take that Friday off it's like everything is working against conference organization for for high school right. teachers so what do you think incentivizes high school teachers, let's just talk psycho in psychology, to go, like what are the, the, yeah, what are the big reasons why a high school teacher would go to all the trouble? So I, I, I'll speak from my experience. Um, I'm the, you know, the only psychology teacher in my building. So the networking that I do is outside of my building. Right, so Jen and I met, we were just talking about this last night, we met in 2010 at NCSS in Washington, D.C., and then like four or five months later, we went to an Ed Camp Social Studies in the Pennsylvania area. Philadelphia. Right? Was it in Philadelphia? Well, wherever the Liberty Bell is. Philadelphia, yeah. yeah. Um, and we roomed together, we shared a hotel room, and then since that moment, like our bond was almost immediate and yeah. everywhere we go, every yeah. conference we go to, the AP reading, we are roommates yeah. and we, yeah. we share the cost of whatever. Yeah. So that networking that attending conferences and you know reaching out to people does is something that we don't often get in our own buildings. That's right. So that's one of the reasons that I wanted to become involved in. And you know, I attended Clark um, quite a few years ago and it was at Clark that they kind of pushed like, oh, have you ever thought of running for tops? And I don't look at myself honestly as like a leader in the world of psychology, um, but like running for tops has been one of the most validating things I've ever done as an educator. That's cool. So yeah. when you say running, there is a vote? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Run and they vote the the Who's tops, voting? The tops the members. The tops members. Do they have an active voting? Like group? Yeah. Ish. 
Okay. We, we wish more people up. would vote. Yeah. Our, you know what our membership is, and then compared to the the people who vote. So. So I'm not, and now I'm 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 saying you you probably we know now looking back that you should be exactly where you are. We'll okay, you. but. Uh, when you are running for TOPS, which is a national organization, and you are from Kansas or you're from Massachusetts, and you're pretty disconnected from the rest of membership, unless I guess you're active on the Facebook page or something like that, but how do you convince people to vote for you, this person? Uh, that, uh, we really don't. Uh -huh. Nobody like, puts out buttons or campaigns <laughs> or anything. We, we do. Yeah, we write our platform statements, okay. and then that and our... CV are on the website. Yeah. But I will say that before we were, again, like this crazy bond that we have, we were dumb. both elected to TOPS the same year. Um, and you had so, already known each other for a little yeah, bit. We yeah. were like, so we said, oh, let's both run for um, TOPS member at large. Wouldn't that be cool if we both won, thinking that there was no way that's that would happen? happen. Yeah. yeah. And then, whoa, wasn't it so cool that we both won? Oh, that's so fun. So, um, we obviously didn't want to run against each other for chair, so, yeah. Well, and I was just talking to uh, somebody yesterday, because uh, the, I guess the equivalent group that I would probably want to be a part of someday would be CAPE, mm -hmm. and uh, I was thinking about that process, and you do kind of eyeball the people uh, that you really, really would like to work with, because the committee, it's, yeah. it, I don't know how long the terms are, but it's pretty short. Yeah. So who are the people who I can like affect the most change with? Right. We work really well together. It's very cool that you guys got on together yeah. at the yeah. same yeah. time. Was there a little bit of thinking, like, what if she gets on and I don't? No, not for my yeah. end. No, it was kind of like, oh, it'd be really cool, but that's not going to happen. So yeah. it was like, well, hopefully one of us wins. Yeah. yeah, and, and then, then the next person can run again next year. Yeah, and, and then, the, then we're like, whoa, wait, you both won. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. That so, must have been a fun phone call. Hey. It, it was fun, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of the things, too, that, that you know, we had a, a pretty active side chat hashtag on Twitter prior to being elected to Yeah, that talks. ran for several years. That, yeah, when, when like, the, the educational chats on Twitter were really popular. Mm -hmm. um, we, Jen and I were both very active on that. And okay. so, you know, our name was kind of out there. We had presented at NCSS a couple of times. So yeah. within the high school teachers community, like, our names were, we weren't just a totally foreign person to, to some, to you know, to those who were up on Twitter. Or so I, I went from a, uh, a department of six to uh, my first year of my new college being the only person, and now I, and there, there's two of us uh, in the psychology department, but I got a little bit of a sense of what it's like for some of you in the high school world when you are the only person, mm -hmm. and to me... My national network of colleagues, they are more important to me in my like in my day to day activities probably than even though I love my colleagues at my institution and some of them have been really great mentors for me and all those kinds of things, but they're not my people. They're not my tribe, right? Absolutely. And, and so I wonder, and Absolutely. all that to say, I think about high school, like that would be the big draw for me if I yeah. was a high school teacher. How do I connect with with other people who are like me. And that's exactly how you do it. You network outside of your school and you build, I mean, the friendships that I have with these people that are psychology teachers around the country is, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, I, they are the people I call when I'm excited or sad or upset or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes more than the people that I'm with every day. Um, just because we are all, we kind of have this weird bond. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's weird. Well, isn't that interesting coming back to that the, the speaker from uh, from your pre conference yeah. who said that yeah. you should yeah, have yeah. those people yeah. everywhere, right? Yeah. For those different right. those different right. uses in your life or whatever well, how you and say I think it. It's it's also nice because I mean I have other psychology teachers in my district, but it's just different because I have the personal relationship with people here. So if I have a question about how to teach something, I know who in my friend group is good at that. Or if I have, um, I was taking students on a World War II themed uh, trip this summer and Linda Wolf, like that's her research area, is genocide. So I reached out to Linda, I was like, hey, what can, send me some links, you know, things like that. So it's been, for me as a teacher, I'm, I can't even imagine how bad I would be at my job 
in my 20, starting my 21st year if I didn't have this network of people. And if I didn't have um, exposure to current research. And I think one of the exciting things about coming to the APA is that, like Allison said earlier, we don't get current stuff. And we went to that grad student uh, the three the minute, three minute grad oh yeah grad yeah yeah so I saw amazing. you guys there it was so cool it was so cool because we don't we don't have you put these journal articles up there we don't have access to them I mean we get the ones from STP because we're STP members yeah but we can't log into some database of journals and get current research we we don't have access to it our schools don't wow. pay for it we we don't have it um, so huh. for us it's cool to come and hear current research, like the girl, the gal who talked about the pupils and pupil mm. size and anxiety, just, well, that's super cool. And I'm excited to go back and tell my students about research that people are doing in this field. And then they had the TMS, is that right? The TMR, the magnetic. The transcranial yeah, stimulation. they have one yeah. of those machines. I, I like, saw that. Oh. So I got, a, I got a flyer and she's like, oh, there's so many videos on the website. So I'm excited to share those with my students. And... I think that just the network that we've built, um, I had a question, I was going to add um, social psych to my intro, uh, my on-level intro class, and so I emailed Missy Beers and I was like, hey, what are some, what are like the three most important things? She's like, okay, let's talk next Wednesday. And I spent an hour and a half on the phone with her, and she's like, oh, try this, do this, this is so important. And I never would have had that kind of interaction without these relationships through talks. Yeah. And I think Jen brings up a good point, too, that not only are we networking with high school students, but we're networking with college professors. Mm -hmm. Because we've taken that next step in our own personal careers, and that's connected us to college professors. Yep. And that's going to benefit not only us, but our students in the yep. long run. And that's... Well, and it benefits us. If I had if I had more time today in the talk that uh, I just did, I would have showed you some um, kind of innovative questions that I've done that really look a lot like AP Psych uh, yeah. free response questions. Yeah. Uh, so that I mean, I think we we mutually benefit from this relationship. And you are the train you're the trained teacher. As I asked the question in the room today, <laughs> who's is anybody here trained to teach? And it was the high school teachers, and they put their hands up. Yeah. That's unbelievable. We have so yeah. much to learn from you all. I know it, it doesn't really feel like, like, like that, that's not the way that people think about higher education versus high school, but it is the truth. Um, you really are trained so much better, and, and maybe, um, and for most of us, we're not trained at all. Yeah. So. And we're, but most of us aren't, we are history teachers. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's like, oh, hey. How about you teach psych? Uh, all right, all right. <laughs> cool. Yeah. And then we figure it out. Yeah. And um, that's just how it goes. But I, I just think it's really, um, I think before I got involved with TOPS, I kind of thought, well, I don't have anything to offer with people who are clinicians or people who are you know, professors and whatnot. And here I'm just this high school teacher sitting in the corner, kind of intimidated by the whole APA structure and situation. And I have never felt more appreciated as a teacher as I do when I go to APA events. Yeah. And I really wish, and I think that that might be part of the reason that a lot of high school psychology teachers don't get involved in things is because they don't feel like they have anything to offer. Mm -hmm. Because we're just history teachers to teach psych. And so it's, but I've never felt more appreciated in my entire career yeah. as I have at APA events. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That'll keep you coming back. That yeah. kind right. of thing. Right. I mean, right. it's like exactly. such an ego boost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Uh, just for whatever reason, our little community feels like home to a lot of people. Yeah. Right. There's, um, and so I'll talk to like at the broader community of teachers because I think mm -hmm. that's what we're moving towards. I think that we were pretty fragmented um, mm -hmm. in in like four year, two year high school, but with all these summits that have been going on the last few years, uh, PTAC became CABE. Mm -hmm. um, just the amount of shoulder like or, uh, you know I, rubbing shoulders that we do at certain places like the AP reading. I mean, we just get to see each other a lot, and so right. I think it breaks down those barriers, right. and we become kind of one group, 
And, um, and so that's really cool. Um, I was going to say, I, I love watching you guys at APA because I see you at all these talks and it's like the TOPS crew, you all move together <laughs> to these different places and sometimes, like I was at that three minute video thing, I thought, okay, I'm in the right place, the, the real teachers are here, so I'm, I'm in the right place, which was great. And um, yeah, so that, that's cool. And then the other thing I was thinking about is um, wh whether, well, Eric and I have talked about this actually. If we could take something like what's like scholarship of teaching and learning in psychology, go to those researchers, first, first author, and say, hey, can you give us a three minute, like a clip about what you did in this study, uh, what your findings were, and, um, and post those online. And I didn't realize that high school teachers would be our audience for that. Yes. I think people would find it helpful. We did a, a survey and people thought, yeah, that'd be kind of cool to hear like authors talk about their work. Um, but I didn't know there was a need. And it, of course it makes sense to me yeah. now that you guys don't have that. Right. Well, and one thing, and, and not just for teaching psychology, but teaching in general, like you read the quote from, um, was it Stephen Chu's book? And it was like the buzzword wasteland. Yeah. It was like, we're this, and, and Alice and I are like, yeah, that's our daily life is going from, it, it feels like sometimes you go from one shiny thing to another, mm -hmm. and it would be really great to have some concise research that in general teachers can use, not just teachers of psychology can use to inform their practice. Because yeah. we don't enjoy chasing the shiny object. We wanna know what works, what's gonna give us the best bang for our buck, and that sort of thing. And I think that maybe people in the policy world and the curriculum level and stuff like that need that too. So not just the teachers, but people in K-12 education in general. Yeah, I've taken the time at my school to run a couple of PLCs like based on the different, the, the top 20 principles. PLCs? Uh, professional learning communities. Okay. So at, at my school, we have to sign up in the fall for, for our, like, you know, we meet five times a year, which... Whatever. Isn't enough time? No, it isn't enough time to actually do anything. Uh -huh. But um, we we get together and talk about something that we're passionate about. And so I've run PLCs on the top twenty principles of psychology, and it's been you know that inter interdisciplinary group of people coming together to look at the principle these top twenty principles and how they apply not just in a psych classroom but at the school in general. Um, and this year. I'm talking with another colleague of mine, and we're going to um, hopefully run a book club and read Make It Stick. Um, and oh, then cool. have that conversation, right? Get that psychological science out there to people other than my students, because it's going to benefit every single classroom at that school. What's interesting about that idea is when you're in this circle of people that we're in, people have already been talking about Make It Stick for right. five years or right. however long it's been out. Um, and we were all taken with this. When it came out, yeah. we thought, this is the best. And that didn't move much beyond our little circles. So right. it is, I was in a, I was in a room of instructors. I was at a uh, <laughs> publisher uh, <laughs> event where I saw um, Danae Hudson give a, a talk to non-psych teachers. Um, and I think they were, yeah, two-year, four-year faculty. Um, and was talking about make it stick. Um, this was a couple of years ago, but had these slides that in, in psychology, we look at these things, we say, yeah, of course, this is learning science, yeah. right? Um, they couldn't believe it. And I think we all felt like that the first time we came across that yeah. stuff. Yeah. But we forget that people don't know it. Right. And so we have this valuable resource and we might think it's old news or something and it's, it's just not. And it's a mainstream, valuable resource, right? Like, it's a book right. you can pick up anywhere. Yeah. It's there. It's accessible. Yeah. Let's, let's promote it. Yeah. Uh, so what, are, what do you think remain other big challenges for high school teachers of psychology um, other than, you know, so access to content? Um, I imagine um, being thrown into a course where you don't have any training mm -hmm. um, in the content areas. So I would jump off of that and say credentialing. That's mm -hmm. something that is... This will be a fun conversation. Yeah. Oh, good. I get a little bit yeah. fired up about this. I love it. Um, so I was on the credentialing strand at the summit. Um, and in my state, there is no requirement to teach high school psychology. 
you have a teaching degree, then you and your school says you're teaching psychology, then you're teaching psychology, or you know, it's a gift. I, I look at it as, as a gift. Like I was asked to teach it, I said, yeah, okay. And that was 15 years ago, and now I cannot imagine my life without it. It has just changed my teaching career. Um, so credentialing is something that I know TOPS has had quite a few conversations on. Um, how do we make sure that the people that are teaching psychology are the ones that, that are knowledgeable of the information, right? This year you're teaching it, and the next year Jen teaches it, and the next year after that I teach it, and we none of us ever get to truly understand what it is we're teaching. Um, I think that's a huge obstacle, and I really hope that we can figure out, and it's a state-by-state -state thing, right? In Kansas, there is a credential. There's a, a test you can take to get a license to teach psychology. Wow. That doesn't That doesn't exist in a lot. It's like 22 states. There's nothing. Anybody can teach it. And um, Yeah, I think there's what... It's somewhere between 12 and 14 states where there's a specific credential. So in a lot of states, you if you have a comprehensive social studies license, psychology falls into that category. But in my state, I mean, there's different if you, different time periods when, like, I have a comprehensive social studies, which is everything but psychology. So when I started teaching psychology, I had to get the licensure in psychology. And at the time, I was supposed to take 15 undergrad hours in psychology, and then I could take the Praxis content exam. And I was getting ready to start my last class, and the university called and said, hey, just so you know, the state changed the rules, and you can just take the test now if you want. So now all you have to do is take a test. And it's really not a hard test, but at least there's a test yeah. that you have to take. So yeah. they can't just dump the class off on whatever teacher, whatever day. So. Right. Even, you know, when I was trying to get my relicensure. Excuse me, one second. Are you in the next meeting? Uh, no, we'll be out of here in 15 minutes before they start, though. Okay. Start in about 20 minutes. Yeah, yep. yeah, we'll okay. be out. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you so much. No, we'll make sure it's all nice Thank and you. ready to go. That. Yeah, thanks. thanks. Um, when, I was, when I was up for my relicensure, I took, um, you know, like a bunch of grad level psychology courses and submitted them to the state, and they said, these, these don't count. They have to be history courses. You need to take grad level history courses in order to maintain your teaching license because you have a history certification in our state. And I'm like, but I don't teach history. That's not going to benefit my students. So what's the way through here? And are you now, are you pushing at the state level for change? So I was lucky enough this year to go to PLC, which is the practice learning Oh, no, practice conference, oh. practice learning conference. And that was hosted by the, um, the APA in um, March. And it, it's the, the clinicians, like leadership conference, basically. And they go and they um, advocate, they go to the Hill and they advocate for certain, you know, psychological science um, bills that are on the floor that need to be passed, whatever. So I was connected with um, the Massachusetts Psychological Association, which I didn't even know was a thing. I didn't know there were state psychological associations until that conference. And the, the people that were there from Massachusetts were beyond shocked that at the high school level, there's no certification to teach psychology. And so I've been emailing a lot with them and, you know, trying to get them on board. And, and they are immediately on board. You know, so what is that next step? We have to go through the DESE and, um, you know, try to, try to get this changed. So is it just because it's never really occurred to somebody that this is a problem? It, it could be. I mean, yeah. psychology is not part of our social studies curriculum mm -hmm. in the state of Massachusetts, which is a little pretty frustrating. Um, so it's just kind of a non-course, even though it's like the most popular course in a lot of high schools. And probably right? the most important, especially well, now. Not probably. It is. Well, yeah, We're biased, be, but... I, you don't want to be like, oh no, it is. Right. But yeah, it's the most important class that kids can take because it teaches them about themselves. It teaches them about other people. It teaches them how to study. It teaches them about bias. It teaches them about mental health. Life. It teaches them about life. life. And, and there's just so many 
way, everything that we teach in psych applies right now to them. And, and to have someone, the idea of having someone who has zero background talking to kids about um, anxiety disorders and depression and suicidal ideation just really makes me nervous because yeah. there's a lot of people that do really insensitive things around that topic that could be really damaging. Well, and I heard somebody say, uh, and I, I haven't read it myself, but that there's, uh, there's an ethics code for APA that we should not be teaching outside of our uh, areas of content expertise, <laughs> uh, which I know, yeah. well, we all do it though. Yeah, as soon as you course. teach an intro psych yeah, course, yeah. you're doing it uh, with 75% of the material, right, right? right? So it's not, I don't really see that much, it, that it's that much different, but I hear what you're saying. Yeah. There is, it is not, I don't want to put any other course down or say, but it's different, right? Mm -hmm. Like a math course has, has a different function in a student's life right. yes. than a psychology course and, and just covers different kinds of things right. of different levels of right. importance to your day-to-day -day functioning, can't right? can't be necessarily potentially tragic in results. That's right. Okay. Yeah, that's a nice way to say yeah. it. And I think, you know, you're not going to put somebody who doesn't have any understanding of the content in a calculus class yeah, they're or in a chemistry calculus. class. Like, they're not saying to me, go teach chemistry next year. Huh? They wouldn't okay. have me go teach one shop. Yeah. And kids so, will cut so, off their fingers. So it's a, bigger, it's a bigger misunderstanding of, what psych, of the value yes. of psychology, yes. right? Yes, it is. And psychology is a science, which is why you have all been pushing so hard. Yes. Uh, to communicate to, uh, I don't know, Everyone. any Everyone. everybody? Yeah, anyone who will listen. Psychology. That high school psychology is a science, is a science. right? And then, but then you run into the state-by-state -state business where each state determines which courses count for credit in which department. So in Kansas... And I would even say district. Yeah, in, in, well, I'm, in my district, in Kansas, the state board of education or department mm -hmm. of education decides... History counts for a social studies credit. Um, my intro to psych class counts for social studies credit or family and consumer science, but not as a science credit. But they can take it instead of banking, and they get their consumer science credit. <laughs> so each state determines where the credit is issued for each course. So some states and some districts and whatever states have allowed psychology to be a science credit, but, which is our push. Which is yeah. what we would like. Mm -hmm. But then you have unint unintended consequences to that where people who've taught psychology and are good at it for 20 years, if it's moved to a science department and they don't have a science credential, which is why it would be best if nationwide they would just adopt a, sci a psychology credential. And then you know that the people who teach psychology at least can pass a basic test. Right. It's a big problem. It is. It's, it's pretty nuanced. It is. Um, but I mean, is this one of the things that TOPS is doing and looking into? Yes. Yes. Is TOPS the group that can solve this? If anybody can solve it, can TOPS do it? With the help of everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> the science directorate, the, the education directorate, APA, yeah. Yeah. you know, leadership. Like, everybody's got to get on board the with this. The boots on the ground. Like, and I will say that at our March meeting, this was a really big. A part of our conversation and everyone who came in, we met with someone from the science directorate. We met obviously with the education directorate. We met with Dr. Evans um, and Dr. Davis and Dr. Shulman and they all were like, what? And what can we do to help you? Mm -hmm. So once we get ourselves organized and we have, you know, like a, a set plan moving forward, I think that, that at least in the APA, the people are, are ready to do what they can to help. Mm -hmm. And what that looks like right now, we're not sure. It really just in the last couple of years since the summit has become something that's like, oh, a focus of our conversation. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're definitely moving there and, and hopeful that that it, we do enact some change, right? That's what yeah. we all want when we, when we become involved in something national. Like, I, I want to make a difference in, in some way. And I just personally like want every kid in the United States to have quality psychology instruction. Right. And there are so many ways that we can make that happen that doesn't really involve like distributing lesson plans and resources, but you know, advocacy ways and and moving 
And there are states that have started to say, New York and Virginia, the most recent, you know, every student in K through 12 will get mental health education. And that's a statewide push. And that's a step. That's huge. Yeah. And, and you know, that, that can come through a psych course or a health course or, you know, there are other disciplines who can talk mental illness. Um, but it's... But it's, the other thing is, is letting people know that psychology is more than mental health. Yes. Because a lot right. of people yes. think, oh, I want to be a psychologist. What kind of psychologist do you want to be? Uh, the the psychologist. The kind that talks to people about their problems, I'm like, oh... Well, let me tell you through this course how many kinds of psychologists yeah. you yeah. can be. That's one little two-week yeah. unit. The rest of what we talk about is not that. Yeah. So it seems to me like TOPS has these these kind of big these big jobs, but you also have these really like on the ground. You, you, you're really responsible at a curriculum level, mm-hmm. yeah, right, so for giving teachers what to teach. So sure. you have to manage these big picture things yeah. at the same time as keeping that responsible and rolling, yeah. right? While we're working full time. Yeah. While you're working full time. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so we are in the process. Tops is in the process, and we have a working group um, that is revising our national curriculum. There is a national high school psychology curriculum that was created by TOPS and the APA, and it's being revised currently to kind of, you know, again, that push as psychological science. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that is coming out in 2020, which we're very excited about. Cool. Um, and and a, lot of, a lot of the deliverables from the summit have, have been very helpful, almost immediate for high school teachers um, which, you know, we're, we're obviously very proud of. Yeah. Well, you guys are doing really great work. Thank and you. it's been such a pleasure to get to know what Tops is doing, to get to know you guys a little bit over Thanks. the years. Yeah. Um, I know that we're going to get interrupted here right away, so right. I would love to keep talking with you all. Um, but maybe I can just end with, um, if I'm a high school teacher... First of all, I'm probably thinking, I could never do anything like that, right? <laughs> like so many of us feel. Yeah, yeah. Um, can you tell people what would be first steps to get involved in uh, what tops or this community of people that we've talked so highly about? What, where do high school teachers find that support and that network? Where's yeah. some good places to jump in? I would, a couple of things. I would say apply to be a reader. Yep. Um, read the AP exams. I think that that helped me a lot. It was really great professional development. It was really great personal development. I was able to take stuff back to my students, but also, again, that networking piece was huge. Um, and also, take advantage of some of the PD opportunities that TOPS has to offer. If you see um, you know, the Clark workshop posted, if you see the, the psych traveling show, we don't know where the, the yeah. cl- kind of Clark 2.0 is going to be next year, if yeah. we're going to keep it at OSU or move it around so that we can hit different regions of the United States and pull in psych teachers around different parts of the United States. Those are two things that I think would be a great place to start, right? Take advantage of what TOPS has to offer. Go to your regional network and start networking with people around and you. And even not just go to the regional network, but maybe email the coordinator ahead of time say, hey, what can I do to help? How can I help with this? And just put yourself out there. Yeah. Because we're always looking for people um, to kind of do things within TOPS that aren't necessarily on the TOPS committee at any given point. And so if somebody has an expertise or an interest in something, just say, hey, if you ever do this, I'd really like to be involved. And I mean, it's, you don't have to be elected to be involved. Mm-hmm. And there's so many ways to, um, to participate. Come to the pre-convention when it's close to your city. Um, there's that conference in Denver. The, what is that Denver conference? In October? The oh, the Act. ACT? Yeah. yeah, annual conference on teaching. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, go to that. Go mm-hmm. to NITOP. NITOP, yeah. yeah. Yeah, just it's get so into the community. Just, yeah. Yeah. just go. And just because you think it's for university-only people, there's you, a place for you. Yeah, you're going yeah. to benefit from that. Yeah. Yeah, and it seems like uh, you guys talked about uh, social media. So TOPS uh, Facebook page, yep. right? Yeah. They can become TOPS members, right? Yes, of course. And, um, and then there's the, you know, the... Division two, the STP yeah. listserv. Yes, I love STP. yeah, which yeah. is a, just a great way to get involved. Um, High trying to think. school people can join Division two for twenty five dollars. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. You get great publications, and it's a great way to see who in the university system is really focusing on teaching. Yeah, yeah. 
and that's where they are, right? right. They really right. are connected to that, right. to that group of folks. And then I think one of the things I'm passionate about is bringing together teachers, and I know that you guys are too. I mean, you started your little ten-person <laughs> gatherings, right? And I, but, but I think that is the way to do it. If you're feeling isolated yeah. as an instructor, call another high school. Somebody yes. else is likely over there feeling yes. a little bit isolated themselves and have a coffee together. Right. Um, it right. sounds like it was really meaningful to you guys it to be was. able to find those communities. And where it doesn't exist, create it. Right. So yeah. I'm, I'm so, uh, I've said this so many times on the podcast, but I look at like U Tops, Chai Tops, uh, I look at some other Tops, uh, where, <laughs> these, where these high school teachers have created these communities and it's over decades, but yeah. now they thrive. Right. And it takes a person or a group of people to say, we're going we're gonna to do this. Um, so, I don't yeah. know. Th- those are my thoughts. I don't know if those resonate. Absolutely. But yeah. Cool. Well, thank yeah. you so much. You guys are doing thank great you. work. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. And uh, thanks for pushing high school psychology forward. We are uh, coming to understand how important that is to what the rest of us do as yeah. well. So. And, and we appreciate that a, a lot. Awesome. A lot. Thanks for doing this, uh, and uh, we'll see you, I don't know, somewhere. At the reading. At the reading. Yes, not before. Okay. All right. Bye, girl. (laughs)